Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Please be seated. Let the record indicate that the witness did answer in the affirmative. Ms. Lerner, put up slide one, please. On October 10, October, in October 2010, you told a Duke University group, and I quote, the Supreme Court dealt a huge blow overturning a 100-year-old precedent that basically corporations couldn't give directly to political campaigns. And everyone is up in arms because they don't like it. The Federal Election Commission can't do anything about it. They want the IRS to fix the problem. Ms. Lerner, what exactly wanted to fix the problem caused by Citizen United? What exactly does that mean? Uh, would you please turn the mic on? My counsel has advised me that I have not waived my constitutional rights under the Fifth Amendment, and on his advice, I will decline to answer any question on the subject matter of this hearing. So you are not going to tell us who wanted to fix the problem caused by Citizens United? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Ms. Lerner, in February 2011, you emailed your colleagues in the IRS the following. Tea Party matter, very dangerous. This could be the vehicle to go to court on the issue of whether Citizens United overturning the ban on corporate spending applies to tax-exempt rules. Counsel and Judy Kindell need to be on this one, please. Cincy should probably not, all in caps, have these cases. What did you mean by Cincy should not have these cases? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer the question. Ms. Lerner, why would you say Tea Party cases were very dangerous? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Ms. Lerner, in September 2010, you emailed your subordinates about initiating a parentheses, C4 project and wrote, we need to be cautious so that it isn't a per se political project. Why were you worried about this being perceived as a political project? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Ms. Lerner, Mike Sito, manager of EO Technical in Washington, testified that you ordered Tea Party cases to undergo a multi-tier review. He testified, and I quote, she sent me email saying that when these cases need to go through I say again, she sent me email saying that when these cases need to go through multi-tier review and they will eventually have to go to Ms. Kindell and the Chief Counsel's office, why did you order Tea Party cases to undergo a multi-tier review? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Ms. Lerner, in June, 2011, you requested that Holly Paz obtain a copy of the tax-exempt application filed by Crossroads GPS so that your senior technical advisor, Judy Kendall, could review it and summarize the issues for you. Ms. Ms. Lerner, why did you want to personally order that they pull Crossroads GPS, Carl Rove's organization's application. On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Ms. Lerner, in June 2012, you were part of an email exchange that appeared to be about writing new regulations on political speech for 501c4 groups, and the, in parentheses, your quote, 
off plan in 2013. Ms. Lerner, what does off plan mean? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Ms. Lerner, in February of 2014, President Obama stated that there was not a smidgen of corruption in the IRS targeting. Ms. Lerner, do you believe that there is not a smidgen of corruption in the IRS targeting of conservatives? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully <clears throat> exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Ms. Lerner, on Saturday, our committee's general counsel sent an email to your attorney saying, I understand that Ms. Lerner is willing to testify and she is requesting a one-week delay in talking, <clears throat> in talking to the chairman, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in talking to the chairman, wanted to make sure that was right. Your lawyer, in response to that question, gave a one-word email response, yes. Are you still seeking a one-week delay in order to testify? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Ladies and gentlemen, seeking uh, the truth is the obligation of this committee. I can see no point in going further. I have no expectation that Ms. Lerner will cooperate with this committee, and therefore we stand Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I have a statement. I have a procedural question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I have a procedural question. Mr. Chairman, you cannot run a committee like this. You just cannot do this. This is, we are better than that as a country. We are better than that as a committee. I have asked for a few minutes to ask a procedural. I want to ask a question. What are we hiding? What is the big deal? May I ask my question? May you I state my statement? You are all free to leave. We have adjourned, but the gentleman may ask his question. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I have one procedural question, and it goes to trying to help you get the information, by the way, that you just asked. What is your question? Let, I'm, I'm going, no, let me say what I have to say. I have listened to you for the last 15 or 20 minutes. Let me say what I have to say. Mr. Chairman, I have one procedural Ms. question. Ms. Lerner, you are you're, you're released. You may. But first, I would like to use my time to make some brief points. For the past year, the central Republican accusation in this investigation We're adjourned. Close it down. collusion directed by on behalf of the White House. Before our Thank you. This was a comedy of the President's political enemies effectively and lies about it during the election year, end of quote. Mr. Cummings. He continued this theme on Where Sunday, is your but I, if you will sit down and allow me to ask the question, I am a member of the Congress of the United States of America. I am tired of this. Well. We have, we have members over here, each who you represent 700,000 people. You cannot just have a one-sided investigation. There is absolutely something wrong with that, and it is absolutely un-American. Here, here. We had a hearing. It was adjourned. I gave you an opportunity to ask a question. You had no question. I do have a question. I gave you an opportunity to make a speech. Chairman, what are you hiding? He's oh. taking the fifth, Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> He continued to theme on Sunday when he happened appeared on Fox News to discuss a Republican staff report claiming that Ms. Lerner was, quote, at the center of this effort to, quote, target conservative groups. Although he provided a copy of his report to Fox, he refused my request to provide it to the members of the committee. The facts, however, do not support these claims. We have now interviewed 38 employees who have all told us the same thing. 
that the White House did not direct this, suggest it, or even know about it at the time it was occurring. And none of the witnesses or the documents identified any political motivation. The Inspector General, Russell George, told us the same thing. He found no evidence of any White House involvement or political motivation. Instead, the very first line of the, of the results section of his report says that it began with employees in Cincinnati who I quote, developed and used inappropriate criteria to identify applications from organizations with the words Tea Party in their names, end of quote. Our committee confirmed this fact when we interviewed a screening group manager from Cincinnati. This manager explained that his employees were the ones who first came up with the inappropriate search terms in 2010. He denied any political motivation, and he made his point by explaining that he is a, quote, conservative Republican. I released his entire interview transcript eight months ago for anyone who wants to read it for themselves. The Inspector General's report also found that Ms. Lerner did not discover the use of these criteria until a year later in 2011. When she learned about them, and I quote again from the report, Ms. Lerner, quote, immediately directed that the criteria be changed, end of quote. Mr. George's chief investigator also reviewed more than 5,500 emails from IRS employees and again found no evidence of political motivation. Over the past year, our committee has obtained hundreds of thousands of pages of documents and interviewed dozens of witnesses. The IRS has spent more than $14 million responding to congressional investigations, but we have identified absolutely no evidence to support allegations of a political conspiracy against conservative groups. What we have identified, however, is evidence of gross mismanagement. Ms. Lerner failed to discover that employees were using these search terms for a year, and even after she ordered them to stop, they returned to using similar inappropriate criteria. And like former IRS Commissioner Doug Schuman, Ms. Lerner failed to inform Congress about what she knew. So I do, not, so I do have serious questions for Ms. Lerner, and I am very disappointed that I will not be able to ask them today. But I do not support the Republican conclusion that she waived her constitutional rights nine months ago when she invoked the Fifth Amendment. And I do not believe a court would uphold that conclusion. Now, the Chairman's gone, but I'd like to ask him a few procedural questions involving having a, a proffer from her attorney. As I said a little bit earlier, her attorney can proffer and we get, that she loses nothing, nobody gains anything. On February 26, Ms. Lerner's attorney sent a letter to the committee saying that he met with the, the chairman's staff last month. At that meeting, her attorney said, and I quote, the staff asked if I would provide a proffer of the testimony she would give if immunized, and I agreed to do that, end of quote. But, but that did not happen. As I understand it, accepting the proffer does not grant immunity to the witness. It does not bind the committee in any way. Instead, it allows the committee to obtain information without requiring the witness to waive her Fifth Amendment rights. I was not invited to the meeting last month with Ms. Lerner's attorney and, Ler attorney, and I have not been included in any negotiations. But it seems to me that the committee loses nothing by accepting this proffer, and in fact, we may gain imp important information. As a matter of fact, the very questions that the chairman just asked Ms. Lerner uh, where she asserted her Fifth Amendment rights, um, those are the kinds of questions that could be answered in a proffer. So I, I wanted to ask the chairman whether the committee can schedule a time, preferably this week, for all committee members to hear the proffer from Ms. Lerner's attorney. And with that, I yield back. Mr. Ranking Member, yes, sir. I just want to note for the record I find it the supreme iron that the chairman of this committee would unilaterally decide an American citizen has waived her Fifth Amendment right while actually exercising his Fifth Amendment right not to answer your questions on behalf of the minority of this committee. 